or our webinar shortly. Honorable Director of Simio Secretariat, Honorable Board of Directors of Simolec, Honorable Speaker, Partners, and Committee of this International Webinar, Distinguished Participants, Ladies and Gentlemen, welcome to International Webinar on Internet Offline, Promoting Digitalizations in Remote Areas. We are sincerely grateful and appreciate your participation in this webinar. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sunny, and I'm honored to be your master of ceremony for the opening session of today's webinar. As the last part of Simolex's 26 year anniversary celebration, the center initiated this international webinar. This webinar will provide an important forum for educators, experts, stakeholders, policymakers, and the wider public from different regions of the world to discuss the challenges and solutions for promoting digitalizations in remote areas. Topics of discussion will include strategies for improving internet connectivity in remote areas through the relevant use of hardware, platforms, and applications. Ladies and gentlemen, now allow me to present the agenda of our opening ceremony. We will first have the welcome remarks by Simulac Director Dr. Wahyudi, followed by the official opening remarks by Honorable Director of Simio Secretariat Bangkok, which will be represented by the Deputy Director for Program and Development, Mr. John Arnold Siena. Before the presentation session, we will have a webinar overview delivered by Simulac Deputy Director for Program, Ms. Cahaya Kusumarati. After that, we have session one presentations and discussion led by Simulac IT and Knowledge Management Manager, Mr. Renaldo Reskino Shafri, followed by the second session of presentation and discussion led by Research and Development Officer, Ms. Ari Susanti. At the end, we will have a summary and way forward sessions which will also close the webinar. To begin the ceremony, ladies and gentlemen, let us now enjoy the presentation of Senior Color.
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Proceeded to our agenda, may I invite the director of CIMOLEC to deliver welcome remarks. Dr. Wehdi, the time is yours. Thank you very much, Masani, our delightful MC today. Dear distinguished guests, speakers, and attendees, very pleasant afternoon, and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to this very important international webinars on Internet of Lines, promoting digitalization in remote areas, hosted by our beloved center, Simu Simulek. The COVID-19 pandemic has presented unique challenges for all of us, including the educational sector worldwide, with many schools forced to close their doors and move to remote learnings. However, unequal access to devices and internet connectivity, as well as a lack of appropriate skills among teachers and students, have created obstacles for many in participating in online teaching and learning. As we explore strategies for promoting digital transformations in the regions that currently do not have robust or any internet access, we recognize the potential of offline solutions to deliver modern educational information and technology skills developments to most schools around the world. This webinar brings together international practitioners, educators, and experts to share the experiences and insights on how to manage strategies for promoting digitalization in remote areas. I'm very honored to introduce you our distinguished speakers. First, Mr. Nicholas Martignoni, creator of Moodle Box, Mr. Jamie Alexander, co-founders and executive directors of Learning Equality Colibri, Mr. Galton Saputra, ASEAN advisor of Kiwix, Mr. Terry Gillets, international ICT practitioners, Dr. Ono Porbo, Indonesia ICT practitioners, and last but not least, Mr. Pikponirai Ngors, Compete representative from Cambodia is ICT practitioners. They will share their thoughts on the key factors affecting the delivery of offline internet information to communities, institutions, and regions that currently do not have strong or any robust in the internet access. We hope that through these webinars, we can foster an open and collaborative dialogues on these important topics and develop practical solutions for promoting digitalization in remote areas. Also, we are very honored to have years in the representative from Simu Secretariats, Mr. John Arnold Siena. Uh, when the time, I would like to cordially invite you to deliver your opening remarks and officially open this webinars. We thanks our distinguished guests and participants for joining us today, and we look forward to a productive and engaging webinars. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And back to our MC, Mbak Sani. Screen to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wahyudi, for the remarks. Moving to the next agenda, may I invite the Director of Senior Secretariat Bangkok that will be represented by the Deputy Director for Program and Development, Mr. John Amal Sina, to deliver his remarks as well as officially open the webinar. Mr. John Amal Sina, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Arani. Yes, sir, could you please turn on your camera? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good day, everyone, and greetings from Semeo Secretary at Bangkok. I am uh, particularly delighted for the invitation of Dr. Wayadi to uh, join you in person sometime in the future. However, for the moment, on behalf of the entire Semio Secretariat family headed by Director Ethel Agnes Pascua Valenzuela, I wish to welcome you all to this very interesting, timely, and relevant webinar on promoting digitalization in remote areas. I am personally happy to be part of this noteworthy endeavor. We have witnessed how the world has changed for the better because of the developments in information and communication technology. For the last two decades or so, breakthroughs in this area have revolutionized the different facets of our lives as individuals and as societies. 
Digital technology has offered abundant possibilities and opportunities never before imagined. Now, we are very familiar with Industry 4.0 or the fourth industrial revolution hazard in by these developments. However, we have also seen how a big proportion of the global population has been left behind. The internet for these people is rare, inadequate, or non-existent according to the Tempe statement. Indeed, access to, to technology has been inequitable, creating the digital divide. This concern is very palpable in the education sector made worse by the pandemic. According to UNESCO, millions of children in Southeast Asia were denied access to education when schools closed because of COVID-19. While many education systems resorted to online learning, a large number of children did not have access to technology that will allow them to engage in such a setup. This is particularly true in rural areas where around 47% of children and adolescents have no or limited access to internet connection at home, according to the ASEAN Rapid Assessment on the Impact of COVID-19 on Livelihood across ASEAN. Hence, we laud Simulek under the leadership of its center director, Dr. Wayudi, for organizing this webinar on harnessing the power of offline internet to address this equity issue in education. This is part of its effort in looking for solutions to make education more accessible and equitable, thereby contributing to the attainment of Education 2030 goals under the SDGs. We intensify our efforts toward the digital transformation of education systems in Southeast Asia in order to leverage technology for the benefit of our children. So we thank and congratulate our presenters as well for sharing with us their experiences insights and practical innovative solutions. Our partners have been very proactive in helping the governments and education systems in the region develop and enhance their offline solutions. We hope that through this webinar, we can spark creativity, innovation, and more importantly, spur action that will bring us forward to achieve our common goals and aspirations. Finally, Semeo will always be committed to improving the quality of life in the region, by promoting cooperation and unity of purpose among member countries, especially in education, science, and culture. As Semolek has exemplified, we always find solutions to address the challenges that confront us. Once again, congratulations to the entire Semolek family. I wish everyone a very engaging and productive webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. John, for the remarks and for opening this webinar. Before beginning the presentation and discussion sessions, we may invite the Deputy Director for Program of Simulac to deliver the webinar overview. Ms. Cahya Kusumarati, the time is yours. Thank you, Mbak Sani, our delightful MC. So, ladies and gentlemen, before we start the webinar session, I would like to share with you a brief overview of our webinar. So, as our Director and, uh, and CMU Secretariat has said, the COVID-19 pandemic has significantly impacted Southeast Asia digital divide. We experience digital technologies and internet connectivity has played a crucial role in facilitating our remote work, education, and healthcare during the pandemic. However, we have also highlighted the disparities in access to these technologies. Next, Mas Sandi. According to a report by the World Bank in 2019, only 53% of Southeast Asia population had internet access, with access rates varying widely between countries. UNICEF also said at least a third of the world children are left without the technology for remote learning during the pandemic. Significant disparities occurred between urban and rural areas as well as socioeconomic status with urban population and wealthier individuals generally having better access to digital technologies, internet connectivity, and online learning. For those in remote area, the internet offline has the potential to deliver content to people and places that do not have network access. In addition, it has the potential to promote open and distance learning. This solution is also one of the critical steps 
to enable access to and mastery of digital content knowledge and prepare users to participate in the digital transformations. So ladies and gentlemen, this webinar is a platform to explore how to optimize digital learning in remote areas, presenting various innovative approach and discussing multiple critical factors for smooth implementations of the offline internet solutions. So what is internet offline? Uh, Indonesian ICT experts and researcher Don, Dr. Ono Purbo introduced Internet Offline in 2018 on his YouTube channel. We are also delighted he is here today and will share his journey on applying Internet Offline in Indonesia. So in the Internet Offline concept, students access preloaded internet accessible digital resources in a device using a local network. This device could be a Raspberry Pi, Quadra, Gabbet Bricks, or an old personal computer. Based on the device specification, we can put hundreds or thousands of digital materials in various format. In this webinar, our speakers will elaborate on various applications of this Internet Offline solutions. Even though it is offline, learners can utilize the device as a digital library or a learning management system. Our speaker in session one will introduce various open learning platform that is free to use in supporting online learning environment. We are delighted that we have Moodle Book Creator with us, the co-founder of Learning Equality or Colibri, and also the SN advisor of QBX. Internet offline solutions are widely implemented in the world. Reliability and secure access to the closed network are several reasons that support this practice. However, what is the good practice of the Internet Offline Solutions? Then in session three, we will have our international and Southeast Asia practitioners share it with us. So even though we are in a different time zone, they're still willing to share their knowledge and good practice with us. So please give big applause to our speakers. After each session, we welcome all questions to elaborate on the Internet Offline Solutions, current challenge and opportunities. So for all participants, don't miss this opportunity. Yeah? Please put your questions in the YouTube chat box provided by the committee. Well, without further ado, I hope you feel inspired and have a great discussion in this webinar. Thank you. I give it back to MC. OK, thank you, Ms. Cahaya, for giving the overview of this webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, proceeding to the next agenda, we have two sessions of representation and discussions of this webinar. Furthermore, I would like to inform you that the moderator of the first session will be Mr. Renaldo Reskin He is the manager of IT and knowledge management at Simway. His work focuses on the latest technology issues used in open and distance learning, such as MOOC, learning management system, and e-learning. He also currently concentrating on development of learning in remote and underdeveloped areas. Mr. Renaldo, the time is yours. Thank you very much, Ms. Sani, our wonderful MC. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable speaker, partner, participant, and committee of this online event. Good day, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the international webinar on Internet Offline, promoting digitalization in remote area. As introduced by MC Professor Lee, my name is Renaldo. Please call me Edo. I am manager of IT and knowledge management in Siami Siamolek. I am excited to be moderator of this session one, improving access on open learning platform for offline improvement. In this session, we will have three speakers sharing their presentation. They are Mr. Nicola Martignoni, Dr. James Alexander, and Mr. Galton Saputra. Now, let's start with our first speaker. Mr. Nicola Martignoni is a high school mathematics and computer science teacher and a teacher trainer. He's a founder and maintainer of the Moodle Box. Nicola Martignoni has been teaching with Moodle since 2002 and has been coordinator of Moodle Friends Community and its main Friends Translator since 2003. 
is regular speaker at national and international conference in France, English, German, and now in Southeast Asia. So, Mr. Martin Yuni, you have 15 minutes, sir, for your presentation. The time is yours, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, I, I will begin my presentation now. Uh, hopefully, everything is okay. So uh, as you know, I, so my name is Nicola Martignoni. I live in Europe. It's a bit early for me. It's, uh, it's 7.30. Uh, I am, live in the French part of uh, 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 Switzerland. So I'm sharing my presentation now. Uh, uh, Fribourg is a very small, but beautiful city, as you can see here, we sometimes have snow. It's not uh, the case now, but it, it's, uh, however, beautiful. Um, did you know that in Switzerland, we have four official languages and none of them is English. So I'll do my best to speak uh, as well as possible. So I'm teacher uh, in college level, mathematics and computer science, and a teacher trainer. Uh, some of my students uh, may be watching right now, so I give them a friendly hello. Uh, I've been a Moodle user since uh, for uh, 20 years, uh, convinced of its value as a learning platform. In 2016, I created Moodlebox. And I will speak today about the challenges of providing quality teaching in remote areas uh, without internet connectivity using Moodlebox as well as the perspectives of the evolution of Moodlebox. Um, concretely, what's a Moodlebox? I'll begin with this, uh, with, with, the, with the small reminder of uh, what is exactly a Moodlebox. And uh, uh, I will talk then about challenges and perspectives. So let's begin with what is a Moodlebox. For several years, I was interested in the idea of providing, of setting a mobile Moodle server, uh, either on a laptop or on one of the many uh, single board computers that were beginning to flourish at that time. We are about around 2015. Uh, more precisely, I was interested in providing a cheap and mobile standalone and all-in-one Moodle server and to allow teachers and students to access this server by wireless connection. Uh, that was my, my uh, vision, a standalone, all-in-one, small, cheap, and plug and play mobile device, which combines a wireless access point with a fully featured Moodle server. And a secondary goal for me, very important, was to publish the entire project as a free software under an open source license. Since this is essentially, and this is very important, it's about helping people and communities who lack financial and or technical uh, resources. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3B was released in 2016 and it takes all the box. Uh, it's small and mobile. Maybe you have already seen such an SPC, such a single board computer. It's very, very small, just like this. It's cheap, around $40. The, the whole bill of materials uh, amounts uh, to $80. It's standalone. It can work without any infrastructure. It can be powered with power cells, for instance, and it needs no network at all. It's all in one. Just this piece of computer uh, uh, is needed to, uh, to make uh, Moodlebox working. It contains a full featured Moodle server and clients can access it to, uh, with, via uh, Wi-Fi. So all that was to do now was to write the software to make it uh, working easy, to make it easy to use. 
And so the Moodle box was born. And that was when my work, uh, programming the software to make this uh, little tool useful for uh, teacher and students. Uh, some, uh, as, as you know, Moodlebox is is used uh, all around the world. Um, you see here a map with uh, all of the countries where Moodlebox was used in 2022. Uh, Moodlebox image was downloaded more than 26,000 times, and it's used in all on all the continents. Uh, very few uh, countries don't use it. Here are some uh, very interesting uh, use case of the Moodle box. Uh, there, these are only small, uh, some examples. There are a lot of many more, uh, but these are for me uh, um, uh, typical use cases. So I would share uh, them uh, to, uh, with you. Digital learning platform for Syrian refugee girls that was in Lebanon in very, very early. Uh, 2017, uh, Moodlebox is used also in uh, non uh, in uh, industrial country in Europe, for instance Germany for uh, teacher uh, teacher training. Moodle in the wild, learning in the wilderness. That was a, a camp uh, in Germany. It's it's uh, also used in France in prisons at uh, detention centers. Inmates have access to course content delivered from the local university locally and this is a very interesting project too uh, we have in ghana rural literacy solutions uh, north ghana and uh, also in france uh, escape game for chemistry teaching at the trois university of technology uh, also uh, uh, in, an interesting use case and uh, 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 finally, reaching remote areas with interactive school digital resources with no internet and no re reliable electricity in Lebanon. And this is uh, the, mo uh, the, the frequent uh, use case in the world, I think. Um, you see that uh, these, uh, case, these uh, uses uh, not, are not only uh, in uh, unprivileged uh, countries, but mainly Moodlebox is used there. Maybe you've uh, seen this one, you've heard of it. It was this project, Tapshura in a Box. It was uh, now, uh, it got a lot of attention in 2017. Uh, it got uh, a big prize and a UNESCO award. It was uh, based on the Moodlebox. So what are the Moodle box challenges? I will speak uh, first of all with the challenges in, uh, from a pedagogical perspective. These are the, more, uh, the most challenging topics, I think. Uh, Moodle box is just like an empty library. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful but empty library. It, a library exists to provide uh, books for its visitors. Without books, it's useless. It's the same with the Moodle box. Without educational resource, it's a fascinating piece of technology, but of no use. And the teacher's job is not primarily to create such resources. They are not author. That's why it's important to provide them with the right learning materials. And that is the real challenge. Of course, uh, educational content can be purchased but just as Moodlebox is a free open source project, I think that the use of free resources is philosophically and uh, more sustainable as uh, people can so benefit uh, of, of these, um, of these uh, open educational resource. Everyone can benefit, uh, especially the underprivileged who do not have the money to buy uh, the often expensive paid resources. Textbooks, costs should not be a barrier for education, uh, in my opinion. Um, from a pedagogical uh, uh, perspective, more translation for the documentation are lacking. 
these uh, translation would help more teachers to use the Moodle box. It, it would be a very, a very good step uh, when we, when I could uh, provide a translation, for instance, in Arabic or in, in Thailand. Thai, uh, in Thai uh, of the uh, Moodle box uh, documentation uh, and ch Chinese and so on. Uh, uh, the third challenge for me is the to allow the, the to empower the teachers to use Moodle effectively. Moodle is is not so easy to use at the moment. It's quite uh, it's a very very good uh, tool of technology, but it it's, it's it needs uh, um, uh, teacher training, and this is a big challenge, I think, for Moodlebox, but not only for Moodlebox for Moodle usage in the world. Uh, what are now the technical challenges uh, of the Moodlebox? Uh, uh, most and important request, requested feature is the following. It's the synchronization between two Moodle instances. Uh, this is very, very difficult to achieve. Um, synchronization between two Moodle instances uh, involve the copy of, of uh, to a Moodle box, for instance, of a course from an online Moodle instance use it offline in the Moodle box and get all the, all the modifications back to the online Moodle without losing anything. For instance, forum discussions, uh, changes in resources, quiz tentatives, assignment submissions, database entries, grades, and so on. It's not, uh, it's a problem at, uh, currently. It's not possible to do this uh, between two Moodle instances, but th that would be a very, very uh, interesting improvement. Second most requested feature, more wireless clients. Currently, a single Moodle box allows 20 students to connect simultaneously. This is sometimes too, slow, too, too low, too few, too few. The limitation uh, inherent to the Raspberry Pi can be worked around, but working it around makes the Moodle box less intuitive and less all-in-one. Okay, that's the main challenges. There are also challenges in management. As you know, Moodlebox is a one person project. I'm alone in developing um, a Moodlebox. Uh, that is, uh, and on my spare time, that's a pet project. I've, I'm, as you have heard before, I'm a teacher as my, my, my work, my main work is teacher. So. This is all done on my in my spare time. So the uh, management, the development are uh, an issue for me. It's, it costs time. And uh, this is a, a little from the inside, also a challenge for me. What are now the perspectives of Moodlebox? I have a lot of ideas uh, and the first uh, thing to, to say is Moodlebox is here to stay and will always be free for me. It, as uh, I already uh, told you, it's very important. This is a tool for unprivileged people who do not have resources, so it will be always free. Uh, a goal from myself is uh, to preload some good open educational resources in the Moodlebox. With a team of friends, we are uh, already uh, reflecting on this topic, and we 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 would like to to do this in the next future. Uh, I'd like to redesign and uh, add more translation to the documentation, as I uh, already uh, told uh, uh, you this before. This would be for me a, a big challenge to get people to to help me to translate the documentation, and as I already. Uh, say uh, as it, it, this is a one person project it it would be cool very very i would be very uh, proud to be to receive contribution for instance as uh, translations uh, last but not least we are also think uh, thinking about uh, in, in including more analytics in the moodle box analytics to provide recommendation to teachers for uh, using a better uh, the Moodle box uh, for improving 
the uh, learning of the students. A uh, lot of work, as you see. Uh, I hope I, we could uh, we could imp uh, improve so the Moodle box, uh, so the 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 usage for the students and the learning improves more and more. Okay, thank you uh, for listening to me. Uh, here are my um, uh, data. If you want to contact me, uh, provide uh, contributions. Um, thanks and uh, good luck for the next uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for nice sharing, Mr. Martiuni. At least I believe it. This information is really valuable to our audience. Uh, we will wait for any question. Uh, collect from the YouTube comment box for you. Allow me to encourage to all audience to ask question or give comment to a specific speaker or to all of them. Please type uh, your question into the link that you may find in the YouTube comment section. The committee will try to screen some good question and I will be read them uh, during the Q&A session. Now, I am pleased to invite to our second speaker, Dr. Jami Alexander. Dr. Jami Alexander has PhD in Cognitive Science from UC San Diego and is so, and, uh, is so co founder and executive director of Learning Equality. He started his doctor in 2007 focus on basic research around language learning and grammar vision. His authority in offline first attack was work has been featured across the BBC, the Harvard Business Review, Fast, Comment, uh, Fast Company, the San Diego Tribune, Corbes, Bloomberg, and NBC San Diego. Dr. Alexander, you have also 15 minutes of time. The screen is yours, sir. Thank you so much for having me here today. My name is Jamie Alexander, and I'm the Executive Director of Learning Equality. We're a nonprofit organization based in the United States that builds open source education technology to support equitable learning in low resource environments. I'll start by sharing a bit about Learning Equality's approach. Then I'll introduce Calibri, which is our offline learning tool, provide an example of how it's being used in Southeast Asia, and share some links to help you get started if you'd be interested in using Calibri. Learning Equality's focus is on supporting learning in low resource environments, and especially the nearly half of the world that's still without internet connectivity. Even for many connected learners, expensive, unreliable networks mean that consistently learning online is not possible. In response, we address barriers related to infrastructure, discovery of relevant learning resources, and limited digital literacy for blending technology into a variety of learning environments. We take a unique approach to building technology to enrich learning without the internet. We design solutions that are adaptable to a particular learning context and supported to scale through a do-it-yourself adoption model. As part of this adaptability, we're focused on making openly licensed learning resources available in ways that are relevant and usable that support the needs of educators at every step, and that work within existing infrastructure whenever possible. Our core product is Calibri, which is a free and open source set of tools and resources, an adaptable open solution that helps to overcome the infrastructural barriers preventing equitable access. Calibri caters to local needs in a few ways. By providing the ability to have a relevant curriculum using content from our library and organizing them according to national standards. By having the interface be available in many different languages. And by having an adaptable and customizable set of training materials with additional resources on how to adapt the pedagogical model based on existing infrastructure and needs. Calibri provides access to a curated and openly licensed educational content library available in a variety of languages, both academic and non-academic subject areas and grade levels focused on K through 12. Materials drawn from the many sources in this library 
along with additional materials uploaded by users, can be aligned according to relevant national curricular standards using our Calibri Studio platform. Relevant sets of materials can then be seamlessly imported into the offline platform with simple workflows for managing and keeping it updated. Learning materials can be updated from the internet when it's available, or from a USB thumb drive plugged into the device, or from another device over a local network. These materials from the Calibri Content Library can then be accessed by learners offline without the internet. Learners can watch videos, read documents, play games, interact with simulations, and practice using exercises that provide them with real-time feedback. Within the platform, learners can be grouped into classes and be assigned lessons and quizzes by an educator. An example, an, an example resource is the simulation from FET, which allows learners to explore the different states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases, and explore how the states change with pressure and, ch and temperature changes. Using an action-oriented learning analytics dashboard embedded into Calibri, educators can track students' progress, identify students who may need additional support, and differentiate and personalize their teaching to meet learners' needs. Learning Equality has also developed the openly licensed Calibri EdTech Toolkit, containing pedagogical materials to support blended learning and training of trainers. This toolkit of resources supports usage of this ecosystem of products across a variety of different learning environments. These tools can be used together in a variety of ways, depending on the available hardware and the type of learning environment. The first is self-paced learning, with learners using devices and working through a curriculum individually, possibly with support from a teacher or facilitator. A common use case for this is in a computer lab or a library type environment. The second is a rotation model, which works well when there are a limited number of devices for a class of students. The teacher can supervise some students in another activity while a group of students uses the devices for independent practice, and then the groups can rotate so everybody has a chance. During COVID, a model we started seeing more frequently was having Calibri installed on a device, like a tablet or a laptop, that the student takes home, where they can study the materials the teacher assigned to them, again, completely offline. And then when they come back to the school, the device syncs to the school server so the teacher can see their progress and assign new materials to them. Over the past 10 years, we've reached millions of learners across more than 220 countries and territories. And that includes extensive usage within Southeast Asia as well. We've seen Calibri being used in most countries in Southeast Asia, with especially strong adoption in the Philippines and Indonesia. I wanted to share a specific story from Myanmar Book Aid and Preservation Foundation, who kindly also shared some photos with us as well to share today. They're using Calibri in five community libraries in Myanmar across a range of geographic areas and backgrounds. They use a computer as an offline server running Calibri. Learners then use tablets to connect over a local wireless network, again, completely offline, and engage with the resources on the server through Calibri's web-based interface. They're using a wide variety of content channels from the Calibri content library, including a large set of Khan Academy videos that have been dubbed into Burmese, and materials covering many other subject areas. They note the ongoing connectivity barriers in Myanmar, with costs and censorship making it difficult to engage with online resources. Calibri is enabling their communities to access a wide variety of resources and activities in a shared social learning environment. We'll soon be releasing the Calibri Android app, which will allow for independent learning without requiring Calibri to be connected to a local server. Content can be preloaded and then be used completely offline on the Android device, and student data will be synced to the school server when the student brings the device back in. If you subscribe to our newsletter, you'll be the first to know when we release it publicly in the Google Play Store this year. Thank you all so much for your time today, and we're looking forward to discussions and questions. 
Uh, if you'd like to download Calibri, view our demo site, browse the toolkit of training materials, or sign up for our newsletter, uh, there's a URL here on the screen uh, that you can enter, le.fyi-simulec, um, or you can scan the QR code uh, that's here as well. And we look forward to continuing the conversation, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Alexandra. Uh, it was very in, uh, insightful presentation. Uh, we will uh, take the, the link at the uh, to exit there. Yeah? Uh, and then just a little info before we go to the our next speaker. Again, I'd like to encourage all participants, if you have any question or comment to a specific speaker, uh, or to all of them, please find the link in the comment section of YouTube. At the end of this session, I will bring the question to our speakers. Now, we are uh, with the, our last speaker, Mr. Galton Saputra. He is an ASEAN advisor at Kiwix, where he is responsible for promoting the adoption and utilization of accessibility education content powered by Adoption File to people in remote or offline area or area lacking in digital infrastructure. He is uh, patient in working together with public school in Indonesia to assist in setting up low-cost solution for offline education content and integrating together with the teaching syllabus. Mr. Saputra, you also have 15 minutes sir, to deliver your presentation and the time is yours sir. Thank you, Mr. Ronaldo. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you to my fellow speakers, audience members, and esteemed colleagues in the similar committee, Bapa Wahyudi and Mr. John Siena. Um, my name is Gautam Sakutra, and I am an ASEAN advisor for QX. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here, and it is with great excitement that I am here to share QX with you guys. So I would first start with what we're going to talk about today. Um, five concepts. Uh, we're going to start with basically what is QX, what our product does, um, the people and lives that we've touched through the use cases that I've highlighted, and at the end of the day, how can we help? We'll first start with basically what is QX. QX at the, at the, is an open source and nonprofit organization uh, with a mission to bring internet content offline. How do we do this? It is through a software that we aim to connect with the un unconnected by making them offline. I will speak regarding about the product and the demo on the uh, subsequent slide. And essentially, QX, in 2020, we have had more than 4 million users, over 200 countries and territories worldwide. The main challenges that we would like to address in solving are poor accessibility to relevant digital infrastructure, as well as cost which are actually similar, relatively similar problems and pain points that our previous uh, speakers presented, Calibri as well as Middlebox. Um, so again, what is QX then? QX at the heart of it is a software, is a, is a software empowered through an open ZIM format. Think of it like a compression library. What this does is it enables us to compress large files into small chunks. Meaning, we can compress the whole Wikipedia English, including text, videos, audios, and links, down to around 70 gigabytes. Now, what does this actually mean for educational uh, teachers, institution, lecturers, and practitioners? We are able to compress a large repository of information and combine it into a single package. Now. On the left, as you can see, QX at the heart is a software that you load into multiple storage device. The most common one is a micro SD format. You can load it into a thumb drive. But the uniqueness of QX is the ability that you are able to utilize different hardware devices to interact with QX. Why? It's because at the heart of our product design is that we understand that QX, when people use it, they need to adapt to their surroundings and based on the resources you have. Meaning, 
if say I'm a in Ghana and essentially I don't have that much resources or access to smart tablets, I can essentially use a thumb drive, load Qx into it, and actually reuse an old laptop in order to boot it up. The idea is that it is agnostic and the software, you can plug it into any hardware that adapts to your surrounding. So we can go from actually a single circuit board, your Raspberry Pi, to old computer and even install it on your Android devices. So um, with, without further ado, I'll actually give you a, a short video of a content that I created as part of our demo for Wikimedia. Um, a bit of context about this one is that I would not, I will not play the whole video. I will essentially just show um, what Kiwix is, but more importantly, I wanted to highlight what Kiwix can do and for the audience and the, and the students. So I'll first play the video. So you, this is a demo video that I created for Wikimedia Indonesia in order to be presented to the Indonesian teachers labor union, or commonly known as PGRI. The aim of it is that later on, we would work together with Kaman uh, Dikbuk or the Education Institution of Indonesia in order to see how we can deploy this. But for the time being, I'm gonna show you essentially what, what is QX. So you, you've user enter basically through Wi-Fi and, oops, sorry. User enter through Wi-Fi and essentially go through your login screen. Now, in here, as you can see, these are different modules that we have. And these modules may not necessarily just only be um, online text or encyclopedia repository. They can also contain interactive tutorials, as well as content management systems, as well as videos. I'll show you. So, in here, I've, I've loaded essentially around four to five, four different Wikipedia in repository, encyclopedia in four different sub dialect of Indonesian language. We have the normal Bahasa Indonesia, but we have the sub dialect of Java, Sunda, and Bali, and one more Minangkabau at all. Now, um, I'm just going to continue on the video. Now, the video is taking you to enter a interactive simulations where you go through to different STEM subjects. Um, essentially, this is Bahasa Indonesia. Let me just skip through interactive, interactive simulations. And these modules um, essentially touch up on your STEM subjects, science, tech, and, and math. But the one that I'm giving an example about is more on the physics side, I believe. Now note that all of these interactive simulations are in the form of modules and they are served offline. You load it first. And the next and last one that I'm showing you here is a content management system. The idea before was that I, uh, let me just show this folder structure. So in here, I have two folders and one is basically your library and the other is basically videos. The idea is that you can put your EPDF and worksheet and all of that in order for you to serve offline. Again, content management um, system. Um, with that, I'll uh, continue on essentially how they look. We're now in the folder of Mathematic Textbooks.
One point to note for all of this is that when, as Kiwix, when you curate a content um, for a certain audience, it needs to be curated for that grade level. With this one, because I wanted to share the general strength and ability of Kiwix, I adopted a general blanket in order to show Wikimedia Indonesia, Pagari, and the Indonesian Education Institution what we can do. But yeah. Um, moving on, I would like to actually now introduce you and to our global footprints. So in we reached, we've achieved 6 million users worldwide. And I've actually wanted to highlight two use cases which I find to be most interesting and impactful, in all honesty. So I'll first start first with the Ladakhipedia offline. What is this? So in 2021, uh, but in the villages of Indian Himalaya of Ladakh, over 75% of students and adult learners have had no access to learning since the start of COVID-19 crisis. What this presents is the problem statement that remote and geographical challenges translating to lack of digital infrastructure, meaning we don't have, they don't have 3G towers and can't afford high data charges. So what did the Kiwis and essentially the Yutan brothers did? So the Yutan brothers created this mesh network in these remote villages. What I wanna highlight is two things. One, if you can see is that they have a laptop as well as a router. Now the beauty of Kiwix, as I previously mentioned, is that it adapts to what you have. If you have a laptop, you plug it in, you, will, you are able to run Kiwix and plugging it together with a router, you're able to create a mesh network. Think of it like this. Um, instead of the internet plugging into your router, you plug in your computer, which eventually serves you your, your content. But what this highlights is the ingenuity of these two brothers that were able to create a mesh network in these remote villages and essentially not only help students with their education, but also help adults train and upskill their skills in order to apply to income generation and also staying healthy. So this may not necessarily just be an educational thing just for um, younger students, but it is also a tool that can also assist adults or people that are in remote areas that lacks digital infrastructure. Next one um, is our project in Ghana in 2022. Um, together with the Open Foundation of Western Australia and Kiwix for School Initiative, we created a community-centered approach which allow Ghanaian schools to participate in consuming different contents without internet. So what we did was around, we trained around 30 community volunteers focusing on senior high school students with computer laboratory experience in order for them to load items into Kiwix and then from them, for them to actually deploy. What this eventually allowed them to do was they're able to have a much more standardized and equal barrier to educational content. Um, over 777 schools, to, uh, total students were trained across 22 schools together with the OFFA, and this has been running for two years. Flying closer to our home, um, Southeast Asia, um, we have just started our Kiwix journey into Southeast Asia. Um, our first destination was actually Tangran, Indonesia. And together with our respected partner of Wikimedia Indonesia, as well as Institute Technolo Technology Tangrang Selatan, we piloted together a Kiwix web server for them to consume. I believe Dr. Ono will share this further on later on. And essentially, I will leave this to him. Um, which brings us to essentially our global, our worldwide partners. These are our partner organization. And one item I would like to highlight in our latest win is Stack Overflow. So we're a, we were successfully able to put Stack Overflow offline. So if you have a dev development question and you put Stack Overflow inside Kiwix, you can ask it. So with that being said, I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you for your time and attention and invite you to essentially join us or support us as we are here to help. So how can we help you? Thank you. And over to you, Mr. Rinaldi. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Saputra.
it was a wonderful sharing uh, with all of us so with that we will go ahead and take some time for question and answer session it looks like we have several questions already operator can you please share the slide uh, of certain question please Okay, this is from Ian uh, to Mr. Nicola Martioni. I'm very interested in Moodle box. Can this device work optimally in access by around 300 users at the same time? So, Mr. Uh, Nicola Martioni, please. Sir. Uh, yes, it's it's a very difficult question. I think um, um, because. Um, uh it depends on how you use it first of all uh using uh moodle box out of the box with wireless clients with 300 wireless clients is not possible uh, such a small uh, device can maximally uh, have 20 different wireless clients this is the first part of the question. Second part, if uh, Moolbox can also uh, provide uh, its services via cabled uh, interface, via Ethernet. Uh, and via Ethernet, it's totally possible to sustain to uh, 300. Yes, it's a bit, it's a bit too much, I, I think. Uh, 200 people would be possible to use the uh, Moodle box simultaneously, but the performance will begin to be a bit uh, low. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, recommend to use such a small device for a lot of people. It's not intended for such usage. If you have a very a, a, a big number of people and 300 for uh, uh, simultaneous people on a same device is is a lot. I will. I would recommend that you use another tool, and probably a full feature server that would, uh, without any problem, sustain such a load. Hopefully, I've answered a question. Yes, thank you, sir. So uh, back to the question. So that is, you uh, not you not you not recommended right uh, more than 20 user in the same time thank you thank you very much now this is the uh, second question let's see from Aisha Mardini to Dr. Jamie Alexander Colibri is interesting could the student use Colibri using their smartphone so uh, Dr. Jamie Alexander Thank you so much, Renelda. And uh, yeah, sorry about the quality for the video earlier. Um, we will be sharing the links um, so that you can learn more about uh, Calibri and 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 give it a shot. Um, in terms of uh, Android devices in particular, we'll soon be releasing our independently um, accessible um, Android application that can be run standalone on an Android device. We're we've been piloting it for a year or so now with several partners. Um, another common access model, um, I think for Kiwix and for Calibri and for Moodlebox is using a device like a smartphone, connecting offline to the local uh, Wi-Fi access point and accessing the server there so that it can be used uh, completely um, offline, but um, accessing it from a server device. Um, but with the Android application uh, that we'll be releasing soon, you'll be able to do real-time synchronization. So you'll be able to install onto the smartphone or tablet bring that to um, a server and sync content and sync uh, usage student usage data back onto the the school server and then take that device away learn completely offline bring that back to the school and do synchronization to get new content and to upload the usage data from the students so that the teacher can monitor the student's progress um, so we'll soon be releasing that publicly on the play store so we encourage you to sign up um, using the link that will be shared or is shared in the um in the chat to uh uh, be notified as soon as that's released. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. So uh, uh, once again, uh, sorry for the the, the, the video. And uh, we already uh, take the link at the YouTube. So please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, go to the to the to the link. They already have a 
video uh, presentation uh, the high uh, quality also you can explore the colibri uh, download and etc yeah thank you very much uh Reza, can you do the next question please Hello, Brett. Next question, please. Okay, the next question is from Adinda to Mr. Galton Saputra. And the question is How does Kiwix uh, differ from other web content, downloaders, or offline readers? Uh, and what are its unique advantages and disadvantages? Ah, this is for Mr. Dalton. So, Mr. Dalton Saputra, please. Uh, okay, I uh, couldn't turn my video on. Uh, I was just stopped it. Um, okay. Uh, can, can you share the question again? Uh, yes, uh, the question, please. Better. Uh, this one, sir. How does Kiwi differ, differ from the other web content, the loader or offline either? And what are its unique advances and disadvantages? Please, sir. Okay, um, I'll split this question into two sub questions. I'll first start answering essentially um, how we are different. Uh, we differ from other web content or often readers due to our compression library format. We're able to take big things and make it small. So, in a, say, if you take for example, in a 64 gig up um, by itself, we can actually put multiple Wikipedia repositories as well as the Gutenberg uh, projects as well as different stuff. So it's in, in the open ZIM format. So compression library is where we actually um, have our advantage. The other question you had was basically, um, what are its unique advantages and disadvantages? The advantages part would be, as I mentioned for compression library, as well as most importantly is you can utilize any storage um, devices you have that laying around, thumb drive, SD card, whatever. And you can plug it into basically any devices you have, given you install it for that device, hardware device. Disadvantage-wise is basically you for you to update anything inside it, you would actually have to update the actual device itself. So say if I actually, today I put a Wikipedia English, and I send it to Kenya, and in one year's time, there will be revision and changes to Wikipedia pages, I would actually have to update that content in Kenya. That's it. Yeah, okay, thank you very much uh, for the answer, sir. Uh, now, uh, we have uh, another question. Operator, please. Okay, this is uh, from Mary Neal, uh, to all speakers. Okay, so for to all speaker, at the first step, you sir, what is the main feature that I will need to try when I'm using a middle box, Olibri or Kiwix? Because this is for the all speaker, I will, uh, first of all, I want to ask to Mr. Nicola Martioni. Hello, sir. Mr. Martioni? Yeah. Uh... yeah. Yes, it's a difficult question too. Um, I think uh, they should uh, try with the Moodle uh, mobile app to use the Moodle box because uh, the Moodle mobile app allows uh, working directly with the Moodle box uh, and can so you can use the the um, the resources the learning contents on the Moodle box very easily and uh, just with all the like with other uh, mobile apps uh, you can uh, students can download uh, for instance quizzes to to attempt them offline and it can be pretty successful in terms of uh, when when the connection is very poor for instance so i i would i would recommend to use uh the moodle box with the mobile uh moodle app 
Oke, okay. thank you, thank you very much, Mister uh, Martinoni. So, uh, to the same question, uh, I will ask to Mister uh, Jamie Alexander. Sir, so if the the first user, what is the main feature that uh, I will need to train first in the Colibri? Sir? So, what I'd probably recommend to get started is on our website. We have a um, an interactive wizard that allows you to answer some questions around your specific use case, because like many of these other tools, Calibri is very flexible and very adaptable to different use cases. You know, it can be used in a formal educational environment. It can be used for learning on your own. Um, it can be used um, within a library. And in some cases, you're bringing your own content in. In other cases, you're drawing. We have a large library of content um, uh, that you can draw particular pieces from. Um, so you can explore that library and load particular content onto your device. Um, you can use our online Calibri Studio tool to um, organize content from multiple sources and publish your own custom channel of content that can be loaded into the offline device, uh, including your own content that you're adding in, and then load that onto your devices to use offline. So it, the use cases kind of depend on um, the getting started depends on your specific use case. So I'd recommend going through that wizard and answering some questions, and then it can direct you either to the training materials or to download for your particular platform to get started um, and then go from there. Okay, great, great, great. So uh, basically uh, at the link, maybe we have, uh, maybe you have uh, another question, maybe we can, can uh, the participant can ask uh, directly to, the speaker so the last uh, i will call to mr uh Dalton saputra with the same question sir if i'm a first time user what is the main feature that i will need uh, to try in the qx hello mr Galton, uh, yeah, yes i i believe i like my answers are very similar to um Mr. Jamie himself, um, because it really depends on your use cases. Um, if I may suggest, please visit our blog, kiwix.org slash English blog, because from there, it, it gives you the different use cases and ability that Kiwix can do. And as I highlighted in my use cases before, what problems you experience, say, in India is very different to in Ghana. Um, with that being said, I I really do encourage you guys to actually go and read our use cases and then reach out and we'll be happy to answer any further questions. Okay, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, Mr. Galta. Uh, so it's look like we have uh, no more time for Q&A session. So thank you uh, for your interest and enthusiasm uh, in joining this webinar. Please excuse us for not being able to respond to all participant comment and question. I hope you enjoy the rest of this webinar. And once again, thank you for the speaker, Mr. Nikolai Martelloni, Mr. Yasmi Ajami Alexander, and Mr. Gal Tom Saputra. Once again, thank you very much. Now I will give back to the screen to our MC, Misani. Okay, Thank you to our wonderful moderator, Mr. Renaldo, for keeping the session engaging and informative. Ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the second session of presentation and discussions, may I invite our second moderator, Ms. Ari Susan. She is an educational technology graduate. Her work focuses on distance learning, specifically instructional design development at Simulac. Her research interests around learning strategies on distance learning, as well as digital learning material technology. Without further ado, we we'll let Ms. Ari to lead and facilitate the sessions. Please, ma'am, the time is yours. Thank you very much, Ms. Sani. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, honorable speakers, partners, participants, and committees for this webinar. I'm Ari. It gives me a great pleasure to be the moderator for the second session. Our session topic is innovative alternate offline approaches to improve student learning. And we'll be hearing from the three expert speakers on this subject. Before the presentation begins, let me tell you how this session will run. Each of speakers will have 15 minutes to deliver the presentation and we will have 15 minutes for the Q&A session at the end for all the speakers. In sequence for the presentation, there are Mr. Terry Gillette, international practitioners, 
uh, Dr. Ono Purbo, Indonesia Practitioners, and Mr. Pich Pornai Ngor from Cambodia Practitioners. Without further ado, may I call the first speaker, Mr. Terry Gillette. Uh, Terry has a background in electronic engineering over many years across industries, including telco, finance, and tertiary education. In recent years, he has been a contributor to open source field telco project that led to the digital library project, which has been successfully piloted in a number of schools around the world. To Mr. Terry Gillette, the screen is yours. Hello, my name is Terry Gillette and I'd like to give you an overview of our digital library project. For a number of years I've been working with community and project teams in various countries including Malaysia, Cambodia, Timor-Leste, Pakistan and Panama setting up local community-based Wi-Fi networks for data and telephony as part of the Village Telco project. One aspect of this work is focused on community schools and the need to provide access to educational content in the absence of conventional libraries and internet access. There have been quite a few projects over the years intended to address this need. For example, the Rachel Project from the World Possible Organisation and the Internet in a Box Project that you may be familiar with. These projects provide systems that can work well in the right environment, but our experience in trying to use them in remote and rural scenarios was that they are not necessarily a good fit in this situation for various reasons. This led us to look into the possibility of designing yet another solution in an attempt to get a better fit for these environments. And the result is the Digital Library Project. I would like to mention at this point that the result of this project is a set of open source software that is freely available for download and installation onto a variety of off-the-shelf hardware in order to be able to assemble a digital library device wherever it is required. The concept of the digital library can be summed up as follows. Firstly, it is a local repository of educational material, which means that it can be accessed at high speed over a local link without the need for internet access. It provides electronic delivery of the material to a web browser that may run on any sort of device, laptop, PC, tablet or smartphone. There are no special requirements for the client device other than that it is capable of running a reasonably up-to-date web browser. The content is curated. That is to say that it is a known quantity and quality and has been assembled for the use of the specific student audience. It will be in a suitable language and culturally appropriate. The scope of the digital library is a single classroom. That is to say, up to 30 students connected at one time. It is not intended to provide a complete campus solution from one device. The device is small, portable, and requires only low power so that it can be used anywhere. Some key considerations for a device to be used in remote and rural locations include cost, power and complexity. With regard to cost, our goal for the digital library was to ensure that a basic device could be got for $50 with no ongoing cost such as licensing. This is readily achieved with the Wi-Fi routers from GLINet for example, which sell for around $30 plus a 128 gigabyte memory card, which costs around $20. These devices will deliver a wide range of static content for a class of students, including the Khan Academy video collection, Wikipedia for schools, OLE Nepal, and various collections of learn to read and more advanced reading material. In addition, a teacher can plug in a USB memory containing locally prepared material which can then be shared to the class. Going further up the scale, we have used repurposed Android TV boxes at a slightly higher cost in order to deliver the Calibri and KA Lite applications from Learning Equality. These devices cost in the vicinity of $80. By comparison, a Rachel device can cost up to $1,000 to purchase. The Learning Equality applications 
Calibri and KA Light provide a complete learning platform, including student exercises and progress reporting. The content provided on the device can be added to by downloading further modules from the Learning Equality Central Library. And there are tools available online to build new modules which may be customised to suit particular user groups. In remote locations, providing power can be problematic. The devices used for digital libraries are very low power and will typically operate for several hours from a USB power bank. This ensures that a class can be run without interruption, even if the mains power fails. Complexity is the Achilles heel of many systems deployed in remote locations where there are limited technical resources available. A key concept of the digital library design is that the device should be able to be treated as an appliance, that is, simply plug it in to power and it just works. There is just one physical device required and it can operate in a completely standalone manner without any setup or maintenance. The device is a low power, completely solid state with no moving parts. This makes them robust and long lasting. The low cost also means that it's feasible to keep a spare unit on hand for use in the event of failure of a device. As mentioned previously, we've used two types of devices. For simple static content, the devices are repurposed Wi-Fi routers, which have been reprogrammed with custom Linux software. For the active content of the Calibri learning platform, the devices are repurposed Android TV boxes that have also been reprogrammed. It's also possible to use single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi, but these are generally considerably more expensive to assemble into a robust package. Content is undoubtedly the most important aspect of any system like the digital library. Good quality and fit for purpose content is absolutely essential for the success of any system. There is a great deal of open educational resources available. For example, where possible have made the Rachel content collection freely available. However, most content has been created for use in a particular environment of language and culture and may not necessarily travel well to other locations. Localised content is generally very valuable, although it can take considerable effort to create. The digital library is designed to handle a variety of static content types, including HTML pages, MP3 audio, MP4 video and PDF documents. These can all be produced on even a modest PC and saved to a USB memory to be shared by the digital library. The Calibri platform allows for setting up structured courses built from individual lessons and assessment and reporting of student progress. The Khan Academy modules in the Calibri library are an ex excellent example of what can be achieved with this platform. The Calibri Studio is an online facility that supports the creation of new modules, which may be shared in the central library if that is appropriate. I hope you found this overview of the Digital Library Project interesting and useful, and I look forward to our upcoming discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gillette. It was a very interesting and inspiring experiences. Uh, before we go to the, our next speakers, uh, to all the participants, uh, if you have any questions or comments or to a specific speaker and also all of them, uh, please don't forget to type them into the uh, link that we have provided in the uh, comment box in the YouTube. We will try to screen up uh, some good questions and I'll bring them up to you during the Q&A session. Okay, we are now moving on to our second speaker, Dr. Ono Purbo from Indonesia. Uh, Dr. Ono Purbo is an expert uh, in information technology, and he also known as a researcher, educator, as well as activist in various innovative works to promote cheap internet and adoption in areas that have limited internet access. To Dr. Ono, you have uh, you may uh, have the screen, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, I hope it is my screen sharing works okay i think it works okay 
Thank you very much, Bu Ari. Thank you very much, all friends from Simolek, uh, Simio, and everybody. Uh, especially, uh, it's it's a pleasure to be able to meet Pa Nikolai, friends from Kiwix, uh, uh, Colibri. Thank you very much. Okay, my solution is uh, thumb drive. <laughs> okay, uh, let me show you this solution. Where is this my solution? Uh, it's a thumb drive basically. So. After going through the uh, implementation, uh, I end up with thumb drive. So this is the solution, thumb drive. It's very cheap. Uh, we can get like for like uh, two gigabyte is, is two, two, oh, wow, okay, 25,000 rupiah. That's like like 10, uh, uh, like $15 or something. So uh, this is actually the solution. It's uh, flash this, uh, this one. This is actually my 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 actual solution. Uh, send this uh, eight gigabyte or sixteen gigabyte. So I basically the the basic idea I uh, uh, I I get the idea from Nikolai actually uh, Moodle box. I tried Moodle box. So this is the the original thought. So I use Moodle box at first. I use Moodle box. I I tell the people, hey, this is good stuff. You can have uh, e-learning uh, application for free uh, offline, and then we can learn offline using uh, Raspberry Pi. And then I try to in introduce this to many schools. Uh, they are a little bit uh, hesitant to use, uh, not model box, they hesitant to use uh, the Raspberry Pi because they have to buy another computer, Raspberry Pi. Uh, many of the Indonesian schools, they have computers. Uh, it's available already computers, but the problem is they don't have uh, software to run the server. So or originally, I so at first I use model box and I use Raspberry Pi. At first, that's in 1918, uh, 2018, uh, I used this. And then I tried to introduce them the uh, Raspberry Pi and fail. And because they have a lot of computers, I tried to help them to install the operating system, model, Kiwix, ev everything in the computer. And again, I fail because it's difficult to teach the uh, teachers to install server and forget it <laughs> it's very difficult so after struggling for many times so i i teach in this area actually in west sumatra uh i i'm from jakarta uh i try in west sumatra and fail uh uh at the uh one day i went to this island nias island and then when i asked them do you guys have computers and they said yes we have server but no hard drive so many of these this area they 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 have computer they have server but they are lacking of hard drive surprise surprise they are lacking of hard drive because the hard drive is broken because the, the electricity is not stable because the electricity is not stable uh, sometimes the power up down up down up down hard drive broke so they have computer they have server no 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 hard drive so at that time in this island I try you to use flash this as a hard drive, and I ins uh, uh, with the the friend from Nias Island. I install a uh, server on flash this. That's when I realize, oh, okay, that means we can use flash this as uh, the hard drive. So I end up with flash this now. Okay, now the server is actually in front of me, so the configuration is very simple. Uh, like the oh, sorry. Uh, it's oops. The configuration is like this. Okay, so we have local server and we have several access points. We can use uh, TP Link. We can use Mikrotik and the uh, laptop or handphone, whatever. You can go to the access point, access the server. So the basic idea is very similar to Moodle Box, but because the most of the school they already have access point, we have server. Sometimes we have they have internet access, but they don't want to share the internet access to the students. Okay, I have to underline this. Most of the server, most of the uh, uh, school, they have actual internet access, but they don't. They don't want to uh, share the internet access to the students because most of, most of the students in their spare time, when they have internet access, they will ex 
access pornographics and gambling. The teacher doesn't like that. So they disable the internet. So without internet, they are very happy because uh, we can make sure the student can, cannot access pornographic and the uh, gambling. So we have this kind of setup. The server is a normal computer and the computer, use computer cost is very cheap actually around $100 or less. So it's affordable. If they if they, they have to buy, this is in rupiah, but it's actually cost less than $100. Uh, 1.1 million is less than $100. So it's quite cheap. So uh, they prefer to, to use this kind of setup. Okay, and then they you uh, at the, at at this time actually I I use mini PC uh, on my setup uh, gigabyte mini PC uh, I can connect to the machine. This is the machine, the actual machine. It's sorry, sorry, sorry. This one. Okay, this one. This is uh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Wrong, wrong. This one. Eh? Wrong. This one. Okay, wrong again. This one. <laughs> sorry. So one nine two one six two zero two hundred is mini PC, and I have the uh, several courses here online. If we click here, oops. Okay. If we click here and we can enter the course, uh, nothing inside the course. We, we have only quiz for for tryout, test tryout. Uh, that's what the student looking for. They want to uh, what that. They want to do tryout of the test quiz so they can pass the uh, final exam. That's it. They they never think they need to the knowledge. They uh, they need to access the knowledge. They they most of the students they they always think how to pass the test. They are not thinking how to how to gain the knowledge, how to get the knowledge. So most students, so I provide okay if you want to pass the test, to pass the test, test uh, then uh, they can do tryout of the quiz. That's it. Okay, uh, and then sometimes then after they confuse with the quiz, then they want to ask uh, for accessing the uh, uh, books. So I then I uh, sorry. So on the same machine, uh, I put Kiwix. Okay, this is how Kiwix looks like. Uh, we can click Kiwix and we can access Wikipedia offline. Sorry, this is in Indonesian language, but basically we can click Wikipedia offline. Uh, MIT, we can click uh, this. And then so the Wikipedia can be offline. This is offline actually. So the IP address is 192.168.0200. The port is 8080 Wikipedia. And then we can, we can access online or uh, offline. Sorry. So Kiwix is there. And then also I have, oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, I, I have to put this one, the uh, library. I think this is the, oops, sorry, wrong folder. So I have the library. Uh, uh, okay, this is the library. Uh, so the uh, student can access the library and we can have the uh, book for SD is primary school, uh, junior high school, high school and vocational schools. For example, I go to vocational school and they can go to uh, the books is very fast because it's in front of me. So the books we can download for very fast. So this is the setup uh, I introduced to the schools. Very simple. Basically, Moodle for tests. And then digital library uh, books, and then wiki, uh, Kiwix offline. Okay, and then the same ID is actually adopted uh, adop adopted by one of the uh, uh, cities. I'll show you the cities. This is the actual cities here. If this is Jakarta, there is a small uh, a small city here around here. Uh, sorry, this is Tangerang. Uh, so this is Tangerang Selatan. So the uh, Tangerang Selatan government, they actually adopting the uh, same ID and put it online like this. This is the actually the actual server online, and they provide free Wi-Fi access for all the students in municipals in uh, I don't know kelurahan and kecamatan. This Indonesian language, but basically in the local neighborhood network. Uh, they provide free access and the student can access this uh, material for free, the server. And the same server, uh, they provide the library for uh, primary school, 
uh, junior high school, high school, and vocational school. We can click here and we can download the uh, this is uh, English uh, uh, books. We can download for free. From this is from the uh, Ministry of Education anyway, so they can download the book for free. Uh, this is how it looks like. So that's how it works. Okay, uh, flash, start from flash this, and then people, uh, I I provide the ISO file of the flash this. Uh, maybe I can maybe see if I can access. Uh, this is internet offline. <laughs> Sorry, my uh, my lab library is a little bit slow here because it's in different machine <laughs> it's, it's accessing the my library but basically the iso file we can access for free if uh, i i'm not putting in on the internet because i don't have space and hopefully semolek or simio uh, have a large uh, server uh, willing to uh, host the ISO file is free. You are welcome. It's about eight gigabyte for the. Okay, okay. This is the one. So for primary school is five point two gigabyte. For high school is six point eight gigabyte. For vocational school is eight gigabyte. For junior high school is eight gigabyte. So in this file, this ISO file is the Moodle, Kiwix, and library. That's it. Okay, uh, it's free. Uh, people can download. Uh, just plug the uh, thumb drive to computer, and the computer becoming a server, and the the other devices can access the server because we plug it into computer. Uh, the use uh, the number of user that can access the the server can be higher. If we use Raspberry Pi, of course, it will be lower. But if we can use the uh, normal computer or server, it will uh, become higher. Most of the uh, high school, especially uh, in Indonesia, they have server, actually. Uh, some school have four server. Some have more than four server. Uh, it's unused. The server is used for national exam only. Surprise, surprise. We have a big server only used once per year so it's unusable uh, throughout the year so if we can have this it's very useful okay uh, with that uh, thank you very much hopefully give you some idea basically the idea is we use thumb drive that's it <laughs> thank you back to you Bu Ari. thank you very much thank you very much Pa Ono. it was a wonderful sharing i believe the more challenging a journey is it's more uh, will be more rewarding it will be <laughs> Okay, uh, we will looking forward for the discussion later on. Uh, and also with uh, to the participant, we would like to again to remind you if you have any questions or comments to the specific speaker or to all of them, please uh, you can type them on the link that we have provided on the comment box on the YouTube. Okay, we will uh, uh, go to the last but not least uh, speakers, Mr. Finch von Rangor from the Cambodian. Uh, he is uh, currently a full-time network engineering at Kumpi, if I'm not mistaken to mention it. Uh, his experience in the field of internet working and offline application and of internet technology. To Mr. Pitch von Rangor, you may have the screen, sir. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. So I'll share my screen now. So can you see my screen? Yes, very good. Okay, so um, as you have um, introduced me, my name is Pipun uh, Ri Ngao. Ngao is my surname. Um, I work full-time at Kumpi. And you see the logo on the screen, that is the company of my background. So first of all, I would like to um, introduce the company. So uh, Kumpi is a, a technology company based in Cambodia. Uh, we mainly um, uh, specialize in education technology that we uh, share with um, many of the Cambodians, um, but mostly people know us from our notebooks, uh, computer selling, uh, we sell computer notebooks. But besides that, we also make our own educational speech website called wagechat.org. It is a learning management um, website. Yeah, um, okay. So our mission, is that uh, we are building tools and providing resources for the next generations of innovators. And the product that we are selling currently are uh, these 
so laptop, desktop, and content server, Wi-Fi network, uh, computer lab solutions, and learning platform. Okay, so um, per our observation in um, Cambodia, as we have um, rolled out our um, software, we have seen that many parts of Cambodia have little to no internet service, or mobile service, or cell services. Uh, and sometimes uh, only one carrier reach uh, the area, and they are also often unreliable, as in one square of meter where you would have the service, and if you move just one one an inch out of the that area, you wouldn't even receive call. Yes. Um. Next is that. Um. However, we have seen that all education officials, teachers, um, uh, official in ministry, in even in remote area, they have at least one phone. And uh, do you know what they use it for? And you guessed it. Uh, social media. And so do all the young teenagers in Cambodia who owns um, a smartphone. And not to mention that majority of the teachers would own a phone as high tech as iPhone 13 Pro Plus, but no laptop. So um, that came to our interpretation that um, they do not really use this kind of technology for education purposes. That's why we came up with our um, solutions. Uh, our product, which is called CompiCon Server. So the content server is a um, learning, offline learning hub for student teachers in remote areas uh, which, uh, with um, local internet access. It is also made with like um, the ease of use in mind. And um, we also would like to hitch a ride with the smartphone trend in Cambodia where, you know, as we have said above, many people own smartphones. Um, so some of the features is that um, it uh, includes uh, offline learning content in bulk. Um, it has indication with our education uh, suite where uh, we will do the uh, cloud synchronization by August of this year. So all of the all the device in offline area, we have synchronization with our main server in perhaps Phnom Penh or at the Ministry of Education. It will have a hotspot, Wi-Fi, and network integration where you can plug it into your larger network and people can still use it. Um, you can also put custom offline learning content that, that you have, for example, from your flash drive into it via our upload system and admins. It is um, user-friendly and mobile-friendly as well, so you can use it in all devices easily. Uh, it has it will have minimal training, so it will be very easy to use. Um, teacher could just um, do normal Wi-Fi like, connection and um, go to browser, and they can use it. And it has many more features that I will not be um, expressing in this slide. Uh, the content server nowadays it has um, it can be equipped up to eight terabytes of content. Uh, as you can see here on the left, here is the web-based content on computer screen or tablet that we use in landscape side. Uh, we have websites, so web-based content, and also um, media content on small screen, as you can see on the right. So you can download, you can view um, all sorts of media, videos, and PDF as well. So um, as I have said above, we have our own admin site where you could um, upload, you could um, do network indication, network configuration, and also to up, uh, update the system with uh, the latest update from our server in the central Phnom Penh. So nowadays we have equipped around, um, in my content, we have 3.4 for 49 terabytes of content, mostly videos and um, some uh, little PDF books, and also some English international content. And here's the uh, breakdown on um, the language uh, content. And uh, as to nowadays, we uh, have uh, installed it in 42 sites across Cambodia, mostly in remote areas. Um, and I'll tell you some of the experiences in our making of the products. So first of all, we um, try a lot of um, hardware configurations. 
mostly we also use Raspberry Pi as all the present uh, previous presenter. We use Pi because as they have they also explained that it is low power, it low cost, it is also pretty small. But um, since we need to put an extra storage uh, to uh, adopt more content that we have uh, been provided by the ministry, by the um, local open source um, content makers, uh, we need to put extra storage and those extra storage need to be connected. So why a connector? So a lot of connectors. And when you have a box, you want to make it um, a plug and play, you need to make a custom box. And without much expertise, as we are not very um, tech savvy with our making, uh, it is a big mess. We use a lot of hot glue everywhere. Uh, I could show you the picture, but uh, it is very ugly. Um, and also Raspberry Pi has a different CPU architectures. So um, instead of using um, the normal architecture like in normal computers, it uses um, Arch, a Arch uh, 64 or probably um, 7H. So um, it's very hard to accommodate some of the software that we are making. <coughs> okay, um, as to software, uh, we mainly um, focus it on stability, like um, it, uh, stability, usable, and open source. It has to be offline. It has to be usable with um, non-tech um, savvy individuals. So uh, people can still use it. It is very stable. It should be stable. It should be usable for a very long time. Uh, and we don't really think that time to fit that. As to the uh, UI and UX experience, user interface, user experiences, we have learned that um, uh, when we put in single page applications, it is easier for our um, user for, to use. We also need to afford in legacy support. Um, although those um, teachers or students, they have their own phone, they usually do not really update the web browser. So we need to put in legacy support as well. Uh, it is a very pain to uh, have experienced that myself because I really scrunched my head looking for the problem, but it's just their phone, they do not update. And also um, with um, search support, search support. So uh, people like to search a uh, thing like YouTube. So um, in the next part is partnership. So as all the previous presenter have said, uh, they create library, but li those library could fit a lot of content, but there would be no content. They need people to help them filling in the content. So we ourselves also met the problem, but uh, we solved it with our partnership with previous, with um, various uh, education institutions, uh, the ministry, the uh, non-governmental organization, helping us with those content and also um, schedules for students. And here is some of our uh, feedback from our um, implementation, our uh, deploy. Uh, we usually get to work with the people on the site. So we hear a lot of uh, useful feedback. So uh, they said that it is just like our library. It is not damageable and cannot be stolen, not for the device, but for the, for the, the uh, contents inside. It cannot be damaged, it cannot be stolen. Um, it can be useful for STEM education as we have put a lot of um, science-based and experimental videos and um, a simulation into it. Uh, they also said that it saves their internet uh, fee, so they do not really need to uh, use the internet much when they use the content inside the uh, content server. Okay, so um, through our observation from uh, after we have deployed the product, we have um, seen that um, it is quite difficult to integrate into the current education programs as um, the education program nowadays is pretty uh, tight, as you say, tight. Uh, people are really busy, just like in the first picture, so they are busy doing the previous um, education program, education schedules, and uh, they do not really have time to integrate and to integrate uh, the content server usage. 
And also, um, many teachers are resistant to changes. So uh, not only are they busy to change, they also do not want to change. If it's normal, people do not really want to change their way of teaching, their way of learning, but uh, it, it makes their student a victim of the future of inability to use technology, for example. Okay, uh, next is that student has limited benefit from the server because of several factors such as uh, lack of devices. Students do not really have devices. Many of them have, but uh, they do not really use it for the right purposes. Uh, and also, some students do not really have the ability to afford a phone or a tablet or any of sort of devices. Um, and those who uh, have devices, they lack access and time to um, to go to study with the content server because um, as I have said, the schedule in the education program nowadays is very tight. They do all sorts of stuff, just not the content server and the um, technology-based learning. And even if they have time and access, they do not have the proper supervision. So when do, they do not have the proper supervision from supervision from their teacher, they uh, normally do not really get to learn anything and they just uh, do nothing and they gain nothing at all. Um, and most of the time with, prop, with no proper supervision, they would not even have access to the, uh, the server at all. The teacher would just keep it in their room, um, their, uh, I don't know, uh, their director rooms and just, it's just laid there without usage. Just like uh, the previous presenter said, their computer is used once a year. Uh, there's no sorts of things. And many more problems uh, that I will not uh, go into right now. Uh, but uh, we are also running a current uh, rolling solution that we uh, do as we go. Uh, first uh, solution is that we try to get more exposure to the local Ministry of Education. We ask, we, we ask them to um, help promote us, ask them, ask them to, uh, um, to let the teacher uh, have more time uh, to promote the usage of content server and also to assign more technology, technology, technology teachers to those local schools. Uh, we are also working with um, technology inclusive learning schedule with um, local organizations such as for Teach for Kids and child funds that we are working on a technology first um, schedule so that technology can be a part of the schedule instead of um, just uh, old school uh, learning content like books or math. They, they can use it for the learning as well. And also one of the projects that I would like to highlight is that we are working with um, IT development banks on their um, technology innovation and evolve project in Southeast Asia, uh, which starts in um, early February this year, and it will end in late October. So for this project, uh, they mainly provide tablets to students. Uh, students can take it home and uh, they provide around 135 uh, tablets for two schools, so probably 60 per, per school. And those uh, 60 uh, can use um, the content server, they can access all in one time um, to the content server, and uh, they would um, learn as, uh, with the schedule. Schedule is provided by um, a local organization called Kambuchi Action to Promote Education, CAPE. Uh, with the uh, new generation uh, learning style. So this project, will, we will see some results from them in late October when it ends. Okay, uh, so this has come to the end of my presentation. If you have any um, questions, you could um, place it up. And here's my contact. And that is all. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pinch Ponorangor. Uh, it was wonderful sharing uh, with all of us. I believe what uh, Cambodia experience, uh, it's also being experienced in some of parts in Southeast Asia. 
Okay, we are uh, move on to our discussion session here. We will have uh, several questions already. And the first question is uh, to Mr. Terry Gillette is from City Amalia. The question is, as I learned from the Colibri, this platform is required to add the content from Colibri Studio, which is an online platform. So, so how does Village Telco works? Do you add uh, the content offline or need to use online solution first before open distribution? Mr. Terry Gillette, please, uh, you may answer this question. Sorry, sir, uh, we cannot hear your voice. It's still no voice. Sorry, maybe something wrong with the microphones. No, sir, sorry, we cannot hear you. Uh, sorry, sir, we cannot hear your voice. Maybe this technical problem with your microphones. We will go to the next question first and we will back to you uh, again later on, uh, Terry. This is for uh, Mr. Uh, ono Purbo. Um, uh, how can the stakeholders collaborative, collaborate active, effectively to promote digitalization in remote areas, especially in Indonesia where there are many remote areas? Pa Ono, <laughs> please respond. Okay. <laughs> I'm confused with the question, actually. <laughs> um, yum, 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 yum. Okay. Uh, I don't know uh, the exact answer is, but uh, the way I approach the uh, problem, normally I go to the, uh, in Indonesia, we have uh, teachers, what is it called? Teachers local group or something like that. So that's how I normally approach the uh, community. So I talk to the teachers groups, for example, the one in uh, West Sumatra, uh, I, I told them, uh, I will go there. Uh, would you like to gather around and we can share something? And, and that's it. That's how I do it. But uh, if someone like Semolek can go to this uh, teacher's group, that would be perfect because Semolek has more power than me. <laughs> so go to the teacher's group. And then if we can go to the uh, uh, local education, what's that? Uh, Dinas? Dinas is what? uh office education that would office, yes. yeah that would be perfect because the uh, the local uh, education office they have more power to to force the school to adopt some sort of technology so that would be perfect uh, i'm more in bottom up approach so i teach uh, talk to the teachers and provide the knowledge but that's very slow and painful process so we need both a uh, process, bottom up and top down. Uh, I think Samolek has the power to do top down approach. I'm I'm not I don't have that power. <laughs> so basically, uh, that's 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 uh, the how we do it right now. Of course, uh, I need Samolek help if we can uh, mix this approach. Then then we can we can have more uh, forceful uh, process. Like that. I hope I answered the question. I know it's it's not not an easy question. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you, Pak Ono. Yes, uh, I think uh, maybe uh, we can collaborate with the Molek to uh, encourage uh, this, and we can to spread out all this technology to Indonesia, of course, to the widespread again. Yeah, especially the uh, education content, question bank, and so on. Because I cannot make all them myself. Uh, we need to collaborate to 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 have these things. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, For the next question, uh, I will uh, ask uh, Terry. Uh, do you already able to respond the questions? Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> we <laughs> we cannot hear you. <laughs> okay. okay, we just yeah, no audio. <laughs> Uh, uh, we move to, you can try without uh, the headphone. Uh, remove the headphone and try again. Uh, okay. Uh, we move to the next question. Uh, to the operator, could you show? Okay, this is to Miss uh, uh Mr. Uh, Pinch Poringward uh, from Edwin. Uh, can the user update or upgrade the content with their own content? Mr. Pichpanrai, you may respond. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the question. So as I have mentioned in this slide, uh, school, uh, administrator, school administrator can upload or update or delete or move or reorganize the, um, the content inside the content server by themselves if they put just uh, your go to browser and go to the login page, type in the username and password and go to the file management system. So we have a sort of uh, window explorer if you use Windows or if you use Linux, there's the um the file explorer on Linux. So you can just go in, just uh, drag drop, you could click button to delete, you could click button to upload, to download and uh, control it in sort of way as you can do with your own file on your own computer. So with the web-based browser, uh, hope that answered the question. Okay, thank you, Miss uh, Mr. Poncho. I hope also uh, you can answer the question. Okay, uh, do we still have more questions? Oh, this is this is again uh, to Pa Ono from JV <laughs> Orehola. Okay, okay. Uh... Can, how can we download the US the ISO file of the The machine. The machine. Image. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any server yet. <laughs> so uh, the other day I asked Bu Cahya uh, if we can, <laughs> if Semolek willing to host the uh, file, I will be happy to give it to Semolek. If you guys have any server, I'll be happy to share the file. Oh, by the way, one one more. Uh, I, I think I need to share the... Uh, if you want to make your own file uh, here, Uh, you can access my wiki. Oops, sorry. This is the wiki. Onocenter.or.id. Uh, you can put the keyword internet offline. And then down here, uh, USB flash disk. This is how to build it. So, you, so the notes how to build the uh, flash disk is uh, written in my wiki. So, uh, so you are welcome to build your own and share it. Uh, thank you. So hopefully Bu Cahya and Semolek willing to to host the ISO file. <laughs> yes, uh, I believe uh, maybe later on Bu Cahya will <laughs> respond to this. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much, Pak Ono. Uh, do we still have any more questions? Okay, this is again. Uh, address to Mr. Pinch Punaingor. Uh, how many units or devices of Kumpi have been used in Cambodia's remote area and from what level of education is mostly used? Yes, please, Mr. Pinch Punaingor. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the um, question. So, um, uh, there are a total of 42 devices that have been deployed in Cambodia. Um, around 20 of those are in uh, primary schools. 
uh, probably uh, uh, they are for primary school and they are mostly mainly for uh, multilingual purposes. So uh, as we have probably you don't know, but in Cambodia there are around uh, seven or eight um, ethnic groups with their own languages and the government of Cambodia working with, was working with UNICEF to um, to deploy those server for the benefit of those multilingual communities. So there are 20 of those and we have put around um, 11 of those from the uh, 42 into um, teacher training college um, around in in rural, not rural, they are in the provinces of Cambodia. And the rest of the 42 that I have not mentioned from the 11 and the 12 are in private schools. Uh, they also perform mainly in um, primary classes as well. Uh, and the last two that I've mentioned with the uh, TISA project was with the um, secondary school from uh, 7 to 9. Uh, grade seven to grade nine uh, in STEM only. So uh, that is all. Okay. Thank you. And uh, since uh, Mr. Terry has a problem with uh, this for the audio, I will read uh, the response from him. Uh, this is the, the answer from Mr. Terry. Uh, regarding the Colibri microserver, the SD card can be loaded with the basic system image where there is no content, or it can be loaded with an image uh, that contains the content required. Transporting SD cards is much easier than transporting complete system. So I hope uh, it's uh, enough to answer the questions. So, uh, Oh, this is uh, also the for all the speakers uh, from Mr. Pauzan. What the requirement that we need to have before we can apply your solution to my school that has limited con connectivity? So maybe uh, I will ask Pa Ono first to respond to these questions. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, quick answer. The requirement. I am assuming. Uh, oh, well, I, I, I uh, okay. I, I, I don't video that. Uh, I'm assuming you have computer in your schools, and I'm assuming you have like hotspot or Wi-Fi in your school. So all you need to do is just copy the ISO file, uh, burn into USB uh, thumb drive or flash disk, and plug it into your computer, and that's it. Uh, so, uh, the problem is how can you copy the USB uh, thumb drive from my computer to your computer? You can send the. Uh, uh, I, I'm I'm really hoping right now. I'm really really hoping. Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, Simolek can host the uh, file, or if not, you you are welcome to send the uh, your flash disk to me or hard drive to me, and I copy to you. Uh, no charge, <laughs> but please cover the uh, transportation costs. <laughs> That's it. Uh, in in Jakarta, it's okay, like only one dollar or two dollars. But in in other island, like in Eastern Indonesia, it's costly <laughs> the transportation. And that's it. Uh, thank you. Back to you, Bu Ari. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pak Ono. Yeah, maybe you can uh, for the participant, you can more explore on the uh, Pak Ono uh, wiki like that. <laughs> Oh, okay. Then you can build yours, but that's difficult. That's not easy. Oh. <laughs> easy you. to copy, then build one. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the information, Pak Ono. Okay, to Mr. Uh, Pinch Ponrai, you may respond to the same questions, please. Okay. Um, just like um, Mr. Ono, what I told you, Mr. Um, yeah, uh, you need to have computer, so um, you, you need to have computer. The computer need to be able to connect to Wi-Fi, uh, and the, the your and your computer need to be able to use um, browser, so Firefox, Google Chrome, or Safari, or uh, sometimes Safari have problems. So um, Safari with lower version of iOS might not be able to access the content sometimes. 
Um, we have met one problem with that since we have deployed. Um, and that is it. You need to have some tutor, you need to be able to make Wi-Fi, and oh, you need to be able to, um, to type in name. So our server do not use the IP. Uh, no IP, no 192.68 something, just kumpi.kh. You need to be able to use that, and you need to know the, the keyword, and that is all. Okay, uh, thank you very much uh, for the response. Uh, it seems like, uh, okay, we have something, a uh, message from Mr. Terry. I think I will read it uh, since it's on the chat box. Uh, for digital library, the basic requirements are uh, student needs. Uh, student needs to have some type of client devices, uh, such as phone, tablets, laptops, and obtain the hard hardware development and obtain the SD card with the required image. No other infrastructure is a school is required. That's the response from Mr. Uh, Terry. Okay, uh, maybe I will, uh, the, the committee, we will uh, copy this, uh, the answer of form Mr. Terry to the, uh, to the YouTube comments, maybe. Uh, thank you for all the speakers for this uh, second session. We have a very, very interesting experience. And we also, we have a fruitful discussion. Hopefully we can uh, uh, meet again in later on. And this session, uh, I will hand it over to the MC Misani. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Miss Ari, for leading the second session, Dami Kodi. Ladies and gentlemen, proceeding to our next agenda, I would like to invite Mr. Timbul Pardede for giving the summary and way forward as well as to close this webinar. Mr. Timbul started working at Simulac in 1997 or more than 26 years. While working at Simulac, he was a public relations and marketing manager from 2004 until 2009 and a training manager in 2010 until 2015. Currently, he designed it as training expert in Simulac. He received his master program majoring in instructional design and technology from Open University of Malaysia in 2011. Mr. Timbul, the time is yours. Thank you, Ms. Sunny, our beloved MC. I hope my son is clear. Yes, clear enough, sir. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, honorable speaker, partners and participants, and committee of this online event. It's great honor for me to deliver the summary and why forward for the promotion of digitalization in remote area. This afternoon, uh, we are grateful to have learned from the expert from different regions of the world and have the opportunities to discuss with them related to the use of internet offline in underprivileged and remote area. Before I deliver the summary and I on the way forward for this webinar, allow me to appreciate and thank to our honorable speaker, Mr. Nicholas Martignoni, Dr. Jamie Alexander, Mr. Galton Saputra, for delivering insightful presentation in session one, empowering access open learning platform for online environment. And for Mr. Terry Gillett, Dr. Ono Purbo, Bapak Ono Purbo, thank you for pitch pondering or for wonderful sharing presentation in session two. Innovative internet offline approach for to improve student learnings. The presentations today revolve around the challenge of bringing technology-based education to areas where internet connectivity is insufficient or no exist, and several proposed solutions to help realize the use of technology. Now let me present the summary and way forward of this webinar. The opportunity or the next future internet offline in promoting digital remote area. The first, this is uh, the development of open and distant learning model by utilizing technology and remote area. Not about the focus in technology, but the learning model in open and distant learning. How the students and teacher in the remote area can utilize technology and teaching and learning as the open and distant learning model. That is an opportunity for the model. 
Then number two, that is the, the sample of the action of the model. Uh, we can create the ICT-based blended learning model in autonomous learnings. When the student learning by herself in, in, in LabCom and rotation model, the teacher arranged the class with, with limited students and the other one going with the, the self-paced class and tablet at home. He's learning in the home by the, the content and go in school about discussion. That is the learning model uh, of uh, open and distance learning for internet offline, limited access. The number T, the standing of ICT-based learning in how ICT makes student learnings. That is the important, how the ICT makes student learning and student learning by ICT. This is related to number four, when it's learning by ICT and ICT makes uh, the student learning, the use of information and technology to create learning experience. We talk about learning experience. So uh, many students in the remote area can learn well, can can feel how the technology uh, working on these teaching and learnings. This is the, the, the uh, very important point. Number three and number four, uh, ICT make the student learning and student learning by ICT in the remote area that is for learning experience. The number five, the development of digital library. We are focused for the sample pro project, digital library by utilizing open and deep educational resources for discoverability of relevant learning resource. This is very good for the speaker to uh, make a sample about uh, that is the, the digital uh, library by using open educational resources uh, for the discoverability uh, relevant learning resources. Number, number six, adopting local repository. That is very important as educational contents, uh, like a language, culture, habit, wisdom uh, for student active learning in digital class. That is where we adopt the, the, local, uh, the local content. Adapting open source software in low cost hardware in offline access and distribution. That is uh, the opportunity how we provide the technology with the, 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 the low cost. For the next. The challenge ahead of uh, internet offline in promoting digitalization in remote area. And the first, how to develop a low cost, low cost in the, the budget, a low power of the electricity, and low complexity, not to complicate the tools or the, the platform infrastructure for remote area. This is the, the big challenge how to provide low cost, low power, and low complexity. And number two, the learning design based on the learning paradigm on pedagogy technology. That is the meaning, pedagog pedagogy first, technology next. Any technology we can use providing remote area, but we back the first priority is the pedagogy, how to design the teaching and learning. How the student, when he use the technology, when self-paced, when the student uh, use the technology for uh, assessment, uh, for learning the multimedia, for learning uh, uh, the printed one, that is the learning design. So we took the pedagogy first, the technology next. Number three, classifying the contents by competency-based and learning experience level. We should provide with the, the for kindergarten and school, uh, also in high education, should be different because we uh, we talk about kindergarten. Just learn, uh, try to fill the click tools. Be yes, happy, fun. Oh, that is the very fun. Very fun. Uh, the the tool is very uh, in, uh, inter interactive. But we go to uh, to the the high school school and high education focus in content in learning so the content should provide the learning experience that is number three for number four need this uh, upskilling and reskilling teacher professional development with the competency the effective use digital technology and engage learner in their learning use technology we need to upskilling and reskilling the teacher uh, because the remote area, I think they, they, they I think miss uh, so many uh, training for, for, for teacher development. We go to the uh, last slide. So we have four points for proposed suggestion and how to address the chilling. The first, that is the, our our webinar for sharing expertise on the utilization of learning quality, Calibri, Calibri or Moodle box or Kiwix and Compi 
for the open learning platform in offline environments as pilot project and research collaboration. We can go for e collaboration for the project and a pilot project by use uh, some platform uh, presented already by the speaker. The number number two is supporting the development that is the cheering, low cost, low power, low capacity internet offline infrastructure. That is uh, very interesting. So Pak Ono also about, about, uh, always talk about the cost, the cost and the cost. Why we go uh, provide the low cost, low power and low complexity. The number three, enhanced capacity building for educator in ICT based learning design. We should focus on how to design the learning, teaching and learning based on ICT, teaching literacy, uh, technology literacy, data and information literacy, and human literacy. That is some of uh, the philosophy of education 4.0 uh, about the literacy technology, data information, and human literacy. The last one. The development of digital library as modeling platform by adapting and utilize, utilizing open and educational resources. Uh, in this digital area, I think that's all of, uh, uh, for three slides for our summary and uh, uh, way forward. And, and the last uh, close piece uh, in digital uh, area is crucial to ensure technology-based education is accessible to all students, including those in remote area. We must continue to invest in innovative solutions and collaborative to bridge the digital divide and promote equitable access to education 4.0. Collaboration among government, private sector, communities, and other stakeholders are also the strongest possible way to achieve the big goal. So that's all I can summarize and share from our half day event. Thank you everyone for joining us today and hope we will see you next time, next event with more interesting topic. And I shall return the session back to the MC. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Timbo, for the uh, summary and way for one of this webinar, as well as closing this session. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have come to the end of this webinar. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today in this insightful webinar. We hope that you have gained valuable knowledge and insights from our distinguished speakers and moderators. Before we end this wonderful event, may I present to you the official social media accounts of Simulac as shown on your screen. Please feel free to follow us to find out the newest information of our programs. And also don't forget to claim your e-certificate by registering to this registration link before March 17, 2023 and fill out the questionnaire link before March 21. The certificate will be ready to download on your e-training account on 24 March 2023. We would like to extend our appreciation to all of our speakers for sharing with all webinar participants about alternative strategies to apply digital learning in remote areas through the relevant use of hardware, platforms, and applications. We also thank you uh, to our audience for your active participation and engagement in this event. We look forward to seeing you in our future events. Have a great day. Teaching everyone to learn through science, health, and technology. We will share our expertise by promoting knowledge and policies. We can build a better world. Let us take a step for a vicious love, making futures for the people to grow in a life.
goes through partnerships, creating opportunities.